Sometimes those little known back lanes of a place can be more interesting than the famous sites. For example, in Heidelberg, Germany. And we're going to take you for a walk on the little side lanes of town rather than that busy marketplace and main street of the old town, the Hauptstrasse. Instead, we're gonna go a little bit off the beaten track and show you the back streets of Heidelberg. And you'll find the side lanes have their own special charm, such as Unterostrasse, one of the more important small lanes that runs parallel to the Hauptstrasse. With a typical mix of uses, including residential, shop, cafes, and famous bridge around the corner. The twin-towered old bridge is one of the main landmarks of town. In German, it's called the Altebrücke, with an official name of Karl Theodor Brücke. It dates back to 1786, and this is one of the signature sites of the city. It was never damaged or destroyed in any of the various wars that affected Heidelberg. There's a bronze statue of a monkey on the bridge. Originally, there was a stone statue of a monkey that dated back to the 15th century. And they say you get good luck by rubbing the monkey. Always a popular spot for the visitor. Walk between those towers through the gatehouse out onto the bridge where you'll get some lovely views. Be sure to take the short walk all the way across the bridge and check out the view looking back at the town with that castle up above. Curiously though, cars are allowed to drive on this pedestrian bridge early in the morning and at night. It's a convenience for people who live here and for some clever tourists. While this is a most popular gathering spot for visitors, locals always find their way here, even for their wedding photos. Shows how much the locals value this scenic location. They come down after the wedding, bringing their party with them and taking pictures on the bridge. It makes sense because this is probably the most photographed site in town. It's a scenic location with river boats and the green hill and the city on the other side. Extending out from the bridge is Steingasse, one of the busiest side streets, with many restaurants and leading up to the Market Square. The bridge is a transportation hub with an intersection of streets extending out in all directions. A restaurant on every corner in various price ranges seating indoors or out, and beguiling little lanes inviting you to explore them. Now we're going to take a little walk off the beaten track, get away from the tourist crowds and the big market square, step away from the crowds at the old bridge, and into the little lanes of the east end of the old town. It's a quiet residential neighborhood, heading towards that triumphal arch called Carl's Tor. Near here you can follow a footpath that goes up the hill that will lead you to the castle, or you could take the funicular. And there's an anthropology museum with exhibits of the cultures of the world. This small anthropology museum does have quite a fine collection, especially of artifacts from New Guinea, of all places. And also there is a nice Asian collection here as well, and other parts of the world. Something different, not quite what you'd expect to run into when you're walking around in Heidelberg, perhaps. There are some quaint little alleys in this corner of town towards the river, so you might do a little meandering back and forth, observing the details of each unique building, and seeing some slices of daily life here, a local residential neighborhood. There's a few modern apartment buildings mixed in. You'll see families out for a walk, just carrying on with their daily life. Carl's Platz is popular with local kids who like to climb on the fountain. It symbolizes the universe and planet Earth. And underneath the Carl's Platz, there's a large parking garage. And there's actually an underground road that connects into a system that bypasses the town. It comes through a gate at the far end of the old town, goes through the parking structure, and then under the mountain behind, has a wonderful view of the castle during the day and come back in the evening, especially at twilight, just as the sun goes down for these wonderful lit up views of the castle up on the hill. 
The side lanes are worth exploring at night also. Very safe. There's some restaurants tucked away, especially Steingasse. And at the end of the block, the towers of the old bridge are beautifully lit up at night. One block over, another great twilight view from the Corn Mark. The Corn Mark was a place where grain was sold in the old days, back in the Middle Ages. It's paved in sturdy cobblestones that are built to last for yet another 500 years and surrounds a Baroque statue of the Madonna standing on a tall fountain pedestal. And that's the Madonna of the Corn Market. It's a, a beautiful Baroque style of statue. You see the elaborate uh, cupids, the putti at her feet. Just a very fine Baroque style from the early 18th century. The corn marked and nearby lanes are among the best preserved parts of town, and the funicular up to the castle is just around the corner. Next, we are taking kind of a random stroll here through these little side lanes of town. No particular place to go, no need for a map. You can just turn left, turn right, see what looks interesting as you get to a corner and go that way or this way. And you can't get lost because it really is a small area with interesting sights in every street. There are free books offered around town by the Society of Burger Stiftung. This combination of low-rise structure with medium density and a comfortable mix of activities creates what modern planners call a human scale, where people can live together in a neighborhood without crowding or congestion. Centuries ago, this comfortable mixing of homes and business within easy walking distance was the norm that many modern towns are now struggling to recreate in efforts to overcome suburban sprawl, traffic congestion, and inner city decay. We can learn valuable lessons about how to make a functioning urban community from these peaceful narrow lanes. Suddenly, in the midst of this low-rise tangle of alleys, a tall building rises to the sky. It's the Jesuit Church, with elaborate Baroque architecture that looks more Italian than German. And yet the inside is rather plain, with a light, airy feeling that is worth seeing. It was one of the first major new buildings constructed after the wars of the late 17th century. A few blocks over, on the other side of the university campus, is the other major church of this part of town, Peterskirche, St. Peter's Church. It was built from 1490 in the Gothic style. You see the pointed arches with that typical red sandstone construction material of the city. Sometimes you'll get lucky and hear some music. There are some older tombs and gravestones inside the church. Peter's Kirche was built on the site of an earlier chapel, just outside what had been the old medieval walls of the town. There is a huge organ inside. Often students are practicing on it. Sunday services are accompanied by music from the organ and choral groups, and occasionally there's an evening concert. During the day, the church is generally open and there's no admission charge. You're free to come on in and have a look and maybe you'll catch some music. For the past hundred years, the church has been associated with the Heidelberg University across the street and its theological faculty. We're now in the western half of the old town and we can recap on the map for you where we've been and where we're heading, starting out by the bridge we took a stroll to the east end, then around by Karlsplatz, through some little alleys to these churches, and now we're heading down the street called Pluck, a route primarily for pedestrians and bicycles. And it passes one of the larger open plazas in the old town, Friedrich Ebertsplatz. And facing it, a fine three-star hotel, Anlaga, opened in 1892. Although many tourists don't know it's there, Pluck is one of the major streets of the old town, running parallel to Hauptstrasse, one block over. It's a busy road for bicycles with all of the young people and students and university crowd flocking around here. Bikes are not allowed to be ridden on the Hauptstrasse, although some do. As you find typically in Europe, the bicycle is a major means of transportation. After all, these towns are rather compact. You can get from one end to the other 
by going just a few miles, and therefore bicycles make a convenient means of transportation. You'll see lots of these bike racks with hundreds of bicycles locked up there. And there are restaurants and many shops along Pluk that appeal to that younger crowd. With so many people going by, you do get a pretty good retail atmosphere, including even a supermarket. After all, it's a residential neighborhood with many homes in these small alleys throughout the old town. You'll notice there are few, if any, tourists along this street. It's nice to get away from those major historic sites and the busy Hauptstrasse pedestrian lane and get into these more authentic local neighborhoods with a feeling for what life in the city is like. Given the youthful atmosphere of the street, you'll find some lower prices and more offbeat items available. Just try not to get run down by some of these bicycles going by. But these riders are very careful and experienced. A few shops and offices are located on the ground floor of these side alleys, with apartments upstairs, including many affordable units rented by students, judging from the number of bicycles outside. It's a place where young families can bring their kids out to a nearby playground and find shops offering important services like bicycle repair and gift shops, all within easy walking distance or just a pedal away from home. There's no doubt this is a bicycle-friendly town. Watch out for little daredevils. Now we'll take a deeper dive into these little back lanes and learn something about the history of how this city came to be. Here we are just one block away from the main street and the main square, and yet it's already a very quiet atmosphere. It's mostly a pedestrian zone. Uh, the few cars allowed in here have special permits. They either live here or they work here. And now notice the buildings. Look around at all these buildings. And what you'll see is a fairly kind of a uniform appearance in terms of height and styles of building. Uh, the facades are all similar. There's no two that are exactly alike. There's no two that are identical, but you'll see the similarity. Now, how could this happen? What have we got here? How did this city develop in such a way that it's so harmonious? The roots of this city are Gothic. They became a Gothic town. Middle Ages, 12th century, 14th century. The street patterns were established, in the, as you see today, at that time in the Middle Ages. But something happened. It was in um, 1689. The French came and invaded Germany. Louis XIV's armies came in, and in 1689, they destroyed Heidelberg completely. They, they leveled the city, flattened it. So what happened then? They rebuilt the city all in a similar style, in the Baroque style. When you get into the early 17th century, this is the era of the Baroque. And what you see today is from that time period. So we're looking at structures that are 300 years old and all built up in this wonderful, harmonious way and then not destroyed since then. There was treaties and special deals that saved the town of Heidelberg. So too bad that there was a destruction of the old Gothic town, but at least it resulted in this marvelous Baroque town being built in its place. And so on the ground floor, you've got a lot of offices, businesses, lawyers, architects, and little cafes, and then upstairs is the residences. So this city is almost like a living museum. Streets in the old town do have a quiet atmosphere. As we've seen, they're narrow and often restricted to only pedestrians and bicycles, with only a few cars allowed in by special permit. In the summertime, there could be thousands of people milling about in the main square and on the Hauptstrasse main pedestrian lane, but at the same time, there's hardly anybody one block away over here in that residential zone. It's worth taking a look because sometimes those little out of the way, off the grid streets that are not even mentioned in guidebooks provide the most interesting authentic experience. We have a series of five different movies about Heidelberg. Be sure to look for them in our collection. We'll take you up to the castle, We'll go for a walk along the main street of town, the Hauptstrasse, 
and we'll explore the little side streets as well. We'll take a boat ride on the Neckar River all the way up to Neckar Steinach and back. We've got a program about the restaurants of Heidelberg and we'll take a stroll on the Philosopher's Walk up on the hill overlooking the city with great views looking back at the town. As summarized on a map, we bring you up to the castle and to the Philosopher's Walk for a view across the city. Walking routes that will bring you through the heart of the old town with some time to just meander in the little side lanes. And then we'll take a tram ride out to the university campus on the edge of town, back into town for some more walking, and then a boat ride in the afternoon. It's the complete tour of Heidelberg. You are going to love this beautiful city. Heidelberg is one of the prettiest and best preserved towns in all of Germany. Set in picture postcard perfection alongside the Neckar River with a classic castle towering above. Filled with old world charm, Heidelberg's historic center of picturesque early 18th century buildings is an ideal sized pedestrian zone to explore on foot. You can experience all of it in our detailed series on this wonderful city. Look for them all in our collection.